we'll start with uh, theory today. I would like to welcome Chidong Zhang, who will be um, giving the first lecture for the day. Chidong is, um, is, or leads the Ocean Climate Research Division at PMEL. Um, Chidong has also led um, many successful field campaigns. Dynamo um, is one of them, which um, was studying the Madden Julian oscillations origins in the Indian Ocean voted um, over a decade ago, now or about a decade ago. Um, Chidong co-leads the international program, Years of the Maritime Continent, that investigates weather and climate processes in the Indo-Pacific Maritime Continent region and their global impacts. Uh, Chidong has been yeah, doing research on the Madden Julian Oscillation, I think at least for the last uh, three decades now, um, uh, two, two and a half decades um, has, led many um, great uh, research on both the theory of the Madden Julian oscillation modeling, um, model deficiencies and observations of the Madden Julian oscillation. Today, Chirang will be um, giving a presentation on the theory for the Madden Julian oscillation and um, a few different theories, I think, and how they compare and contrast. Thanks, Chirang. Thank you, Anish. Um, I would like to uh, express my um, um, appreciation uh, for um, to Anish and the Judas uh, to, uh, for organizing this uh, symposium. I remember the uh, the first symposium I attended when I was a graduate student, and still vividly remember some of the lectures and debates, and uh, that uh, has uh, benefit uh, my the rest of my career. And ho I hope the the students participant here will have the same benefit. So uh, let me share my screen. And because after I share my screen, I cannot see anything. So if anything goes wrong, just uh, uh, give me a holler. Okay, sharing. So we don't see your video again, Chirong. Um, oh, I see, I'm sorry. Uh, I think once I click sharing, somehow the video disappeared. Okay. Okay, perfect. Let me try again. Now it oh, works. did you see that my screen? Yeah. You see, you see my screen? Yeah. No, my it's, it's not digit. full screen. It's not full screen yet, but how about okay. this? Yeah. Works no, too. okay. All right. So I'll start. Um so today's uh, topic is uh, theories of tropical inter, uh, interstitial oscillation, but mainly we're going to talk about uh, uh, theories of the MJO. And um, uh, for all of you who are interested in uh, tropical interstitial oscillation, have some background knowledge about the dynamics through theories uh, on MJO it will be uh, very beneficial uh, because it will um, help you to understand the dynamic process, not just MGO itself, probably uh, the MGO influence on the global weather and climate. So the materials I'm going to present you today uh, are pretty much based on these uh, four publications. The first one is uh, an MGO review um, uh, some time ago. Uh, in this paper, uh, section three, uh, mechanics, uh, mechanism. Uh, include some of the uh, discussions of early attempt of understanding the MGO through theories. And then the second paper in 2020 uh, is a, a review paper of four, particularly four MGO theories in a very detailed comparison of four theories. So if anyone who is interested in um, the detailed theories about MGO, um, this is, would be a good paper to study. The next one also published in 2020 uh, is a um, is a much broader review of the MGO, uh, especially the recent progress uh, on MGO. And in this paper, section 3.2, uh, specifically discussed the modern theories of MGO, include uh, um, many uh, MGO theories, um, except the one, the last one, which just published earlier this year. So this one uh, is not included in that review paper. That's why I listed here. So uh, in this lecture, uh, first I will provide some uh, background, give you a context of the MGO theory, and then uh, we're going to set a standard, what we would uh, call uh, a, a theory of MGO, and what's the difference between theories and hypotheses and assumptions, and what we should expect from uh, a theory of the MGO. 
And then we're going to demonstrate uh, the current very broad and uh, diverse thinking of the MGO theories. Uh, you, you will see that uh, there are uh, many, many different ways to describe MGO dynamics. And if we have time, we're going to dive into three theories and give you a little bit more details. So uh, as a background, we have a lot of theories about um, uh, tropical atmospheres um, through water circulation, Hadley circulation, and IPCC, and these two are closely related. Uh, Quasi-biennial oscillation, or QBO, and this is an excellent example of how the discovery of these phenomena from observations uh, led to a complete theory in a very short time period. Um, this is probably one of the best uh, theories in, um, in, uh, um, about the tropical atmosphere. And now, of course, we have uh, many, many different theoretical approaches about monsoons, about tropical cyclones, and the easterly waves, and equatorial waves. And equatorial waves is another wonderful example of a um, elegant mathematical solutions to atmospheric motions. And the theories of uh, the uh, MGO is pretty much based on equatorial waves, as we will see. First of all, let's uh, uh, set our standard. I would have to emphasize that conceptual models or hypotheses or um, assumptions are not theories. Um, no matter where you get uh, developed uh, conceptual models from observations or from numer numerical simulations, and they cannot be treated as a theories. Um, because conceptual models usually give you, describe verbally or graphically some important physical uh, process, dynamical process, but it's not quantitative. And um, we have a lot of conceptual models about MGO, and they usually come with uh, nice graphics and emphasize on certain aspects of the MGO. And uh, um, in the literature, there are many, many of them, and not all of them are theories. So we can emphasize on theory. So what, what is uh, an MGO theory? First of all, it has to be quantitative. And if you want to be quantitative, it has to involve equations, first principle. So the MGO theory would have to ba be based on the linear stock equations. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is no matter what uh, theories uh, you're going to make, you have to have assumptions and approximations. And for an MGO theory, those assumptions and approximations will have to be um, testable against observations when those observations are available. That's the second uh, criteria. The third one is specifically for the MGO, you will have to explain the most fundamental features of the MGO. And they are the intraseasonal times, the intraseasonal scales and the planetary scale. So the time and the spatial scale and, it, and it's eastward propagation. And sometimes you can uh, replace one of them using the east, uh, uh, eastward propagation speed. You have to explain those fundamental features quantitatively. So those are the requirements for MGO theories. And if you use this compared with some of the hypotheses and uh, assumptions, you will find out those hypotheses and assumptions are hand waving. They probably sound very uh, reasonable, but they are not quantitative. So that's the fundamental difference. So I assume all of you are familiar with the MGO, so I don't have to say too much about the MGO. I'm showing this just to give you, um, put us in the, on, on the same ground. Um, uh, the figure on the left is the classic original schematic of the MGO drawn by the Menden and Julian in, in their uh, phenomenal uh, papers. So uh, in the right is the um, uh, modern representation of the MGO in terms of precipitation anomalies in the in eight uh, phases based on the RMM index. Well, I'm showing this to emphasize that precipitation and the convection has been integrated part of the MGO from the very beginning. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, the next one, showing you the horizontal structure of the MGO. And uh, if you are familiar with the Gill solution, which is showing in the upper right. And you will know that once you have uh, convective heating in the tropics and you will generate a uh, Rossby structure. Let me show you here. Can you see my cursor? I assume you can see it. So you will generate a Rossby gyres to the west 
of the convective center, which is showing in the upper part, and uh, uh, Kelvin wave structure to the east. And this is a very uh, um, um, uh, classical uh, solution to um, uh, the, the uh, flow pattern in response to uh, convective heating. The MGO horizontal structure in the lower panel shows a very similar structure, but, but uh, with a little bit different. Uh, the red dot represents the convective center of the MGO. This is composite. To the west, you can see these two big um, uh, gyres represent the Rossby waves. To the east, you can see this extended zonal flow near uh, equator, uh, which is the structure of the cavern wave. But what's different between um, this MGO structure and the, the uh, classical Gill solution is you have another pair of MGO, uh, of the uh, Rossby gyres. And uh, this one can be um, explained as the Rossby response to the negative anomaly of a convection associated with MGO. And we all know that when MGO has the active, convectively active and, and the inactive phase, two phases. So this, um, Green dot, blue dot, represent the uh, inactive phase of the MGO. So these inactive phase of the MGO also generate Rossby waves to the west, but uh, with the uh, opposite sign as the Rossby wave west of the active convective center. So you have these uh, um, two pairs of Rossby waves, which sometimes people refer to as uh, um, um, quad quadruple uh, vortices. So uh, just keep it in, in mind because some of the theory will um, will um, um, including those stru structures. Okay, one fundamental um, uh, problem uh, uh, related to the MGO is why MGO propagate is right. That's the that's that, that's uh, one of the most fundam fundamental feature of uh, MGO. And if you uh, read the literatures, uh, the most common explanation is um, MGO propagate eastward because the low level moisture is higher to the east of convective center of the MGO than to the west. So this is a schematic diagram just illustrate that. The, the tall cloud represent the uh, convective center and the, um, the uh, green represent the uh, moisture. So you can see moisture is um, uh, higher to the east. Is this red uh, answer? Uh, the, if you look at the MGO observations, every single event, you will see this. If you look at MGO composite, you will see that. If you look at the uh, num numerical simulation um, by um, global models, and if they can produce uh, MGO, you will see this feature. So everything you can observe, you will see that. So this sounds like a very reasonable um, answer. But I'll call this uh, elephant's trunk explanation. And the reason is, if you ask a naive question, why do elephants prefer to move forward instead of backward? You take observation, you will find all, all elephants move forward because they follow their trunks. Their trunks always lead their ways, right? So then you have answer is, and you prefer to move forward because of their trunks. And you may all laugh. But the logic is exactly the same as we explained in MGO in terms of the low level moisture. Because you observe that and no exception, so you take that as a reason, as a dynamic reason. Go back to the MGO. You can simply ask why this low level moisture does not occur west of the convection center. So the MGO move westward. That's a very logical question. So just use the low level moisture to uh, understand the MGO eastward propagation is not sufficient. So let me introduce you a conundrum in uh, tropical meteorology. And that is very simple. If you are familiar with the Matsuno solution, uh, this is the Matsuno's uh, shallow water equation. It leads to a set of solutions represent um, a series of uh, equatorial waves. Right? So it's a very, very nice uh, mathematical solution to the atmosphere uh, flows. But there's no MGO solution. If you look at the observations, and um, they are um, uh, using either precipitation or cloud, you'll find the, uh, the uh, spectrum peak that line up very well with the predict uh, um, dispersion relationship uh, from Matsuno solution, except in the observed spectrum, 
you have MGO signal on the bottom, and there is no MGO in the Matsumo solution. So what happens? Well, the in the community, we think the the reason the Matsumo solution does not include MGO is because uh, some critical uh, component of the MGO is not included in this simple linear gel water equation. So what is missing? Uh, as we saw earlier, uh, MGO is um, very closely related to convection. So maybe what is missing is diabetic heat. So maybe we should add that, that diabetic heating to this equation. And uh, MGO is uh, um, uh, a signal is always related to moisture variability. So maybe we should add moisture to this equation. And maybe this equation just represent a, a single um, a vertical structure. MGO is much more complicated. So let's add vertical structure, for example, boundary layer. Or maybe we can add surface conditions, for example, um, evaporation from ocean uh, surface. Or maybe be, maybe because uh, MGO is a nonlinear process. So this linear equation cannot give us MGO solution. So maybe we can consider nonlinear energy. And this equation, the MGO, uh, the uh, Matsuno solution does not include any viscosity. So maybe we should add a viscosity to this equation. And maybe there's something else missing and we have not discovered. And so the basic approach to MGO theory is to add additional terms, additional variables to this simple mathematical um, shallow water equation. Let's see uh, whether we can do that or not. So uh, that's uh, the early attempt is basically follow uh, this, this type of thinking as a viscosity, as diabetic heating, especially at a di uh, interaction between di di diabetic heating and, uh, uh, and the wind, at the surface um, uh, evaporation, and, uh, and at the boundary layer. And uh, we're going to discuss in details how each of these components uh, play a role in the modern MGO theories. So this table lists currently available MGO theories. Um, like we, we call them modern theories because they are all the recent theories uh, during the last uh, decade or, or two. Um, the first three, the top three in the uh, red box uh, share a lot of similarities. They all think moisture variability is the key. They all include moisture and the convection coupling. They all think cloud radiation feedback are critical to, to the MGO. What's different is um, the first one um, rely on assumption. Uh, we call it uh, weak temperature gradient. And based on this assumption, um, precipitation uh, and the moisture are directly can be directly related. And the second one uh, rely on uh, surface moisture, um, and the third one rely on a an assumption of uh, equilibrium, uh, quasi equilibrium in the boundary layer. So, uh, in addition to those details, these three share very very uh, common uh, basic dynamics. The third, uh, the, the next one, the trail uh, interaction basically emphasize on um, uh, boundary layer uh, convergence as the key. Um, the skeleton one uh, emphasize the interaction between MGO and uh, synoptic and mesoscale systems. And uh, they call this uh, skeleton because at that time they think this is the simplest uh, MGO theory, but uh, it turns out it's not, uh, as we will see. Everything above this um, Green, uh, yellow line represent um, uh, a, a group of theory that emphasize the interaction between convection and the circulation. On the next one, uh, the larger scale vortex, uh, this one uh, emphasize on the uh, vorticity generation at a low level uh, due to stretching. Um, it does not uh, explicitly include uh, the interaction between um, convection and uh, circulation, uh, and it does not explicitly, uh, explicitly include moisture. The graphy wave theory em uh, uh, emphasizes on the, uh, the difference between eastward and westward propagating inertial gravity waves. And the MGO exists because of those gravity waves, and it does not include explicitly moisture either. The solid wave is the only nonlinear wave. They think uh, MGO is, uh, um, uh, is a solitary Rossby wave, wave, which is nonlinear. 
And the last one is harmonic oscillator. They think the MGO is basically a configured or uh, uh, transformed uh, Kelvin waves. When you include the viscosity, the Kelvin will just become the MGO. So those are the general ideas of the um, uh, MGO dynamics based on different uh, thinking. So let's see what's the difference and um, similarity between those um, theories. As I said, uh, there's only one nonlinear MGO theory, that's the solitary wave. And uh, most of the theories, including uh, convective coupling with the circulation, and the two, uh, there's a two uh, that don't. Um, uh, five of these theories emphasize on uh, the moisture variability. So they all include a prognostic equation for moisture and the rest of four do not. And uh, for those that include uh, moisture variability, the moisture play a key role uh, for uh, MGO propagation. Um, in, in theory, most time when you want to uh, uh, explain a perturbation, you use um, the approach of unstable mode. You assume a solution which is unstable, and then you look at what scale uh, the unstable mode grow the fast, uh, uh, fast. So uh, most of these MGO theory take this approach. Um, assume MGO is unstable uh, mode and uh, they look uh, the reason why this unstable mode grow uh, fastest uh, at the intraseasonal time scale and at the planetary scale. And four of the theories do not assume MGO uh, as an unstable mode. Uh, some, in some of them MGO is neutral and some of them MGO is uh, damped. And again, uh, if you include the moisture in the uh, uh, in the MGO theory, the moisture would play a role uh, for MGO growth. Uh, so uh, five of those theories include this. Now, cloud radiation, uh, cloud radiation feedback to a circulation is important in four of the MGO theories, not in uh, five of them. And as I as we discussed, uh, MGO has this uh, Rossby carbon wave structure, and very interesting. Uh, among all those theories, three of them, including both the Rossby and uh, Kelvin wave structures. And uh, three of them include the only uh, Kelvin wave structures. And the four of them include all, only the Rossby wave structure. And uh, a momentum damping, um, the Matsuno solution, Matsuno equation does not include the momentum damping. Three theories include the momentum damping, but only one. Uh, in only one uh, um, series, momentum damping plays Q. Um, atmosphere boundary layer, four, uh, three of them include the atmosphere boundary layer, the others don't. So you can see that there is a lot of uh, different thinking, a lot of different process, and uh, um, um, some of the process play key roles in, in, in theories, others uh, not at all. So those are the diverse thinking of, of MGO theory. Okay, so uh, I only have five minutes left uh, in our in my 30 minutes allowment. So let me quickly go through three theories if I if I can uh, manage in five minutes. So the moisture mode theory is is um, currently the most popular theories and the well accepted. Um, the essence of this theory is uh, the intraseasonal time scale is de is determined um, by the feedback between water vapor and convection. And it based on a very simple hypothesis um, from observations. So this shows the precipitation versus uh, uh, moisture in the tropics. And you can see there is a um, exponential, quasi exponential dependence. And uh, in this theory, they took uh, the middle of that and linearized this uh, exponential curve uh, so they can find an analytical solution. And this is how they uh, um, how the assumption is made. The, the variability of uh, uh, column moisture is directly re related to the variability of precipitation. And this give, gives the time scale of the MGO. And the, the planetary scale is, comes from the uh, long wave cloud radiation feedback because in the upper troposphere, um, convective uh, cloud will generate a big number of cloud and spread in, uh, into a large area. And that uh, the feedback give you the uh, large uh, uh, planetary scale of the MGO. And lastly, the 
uh, the east border propagation, as I said, is due to, uh, as I said, uh, the moisture is always a high, lower, low level moisture is always higher to the east. And the e, this equation explains exactly why. It's because the caravan and the Ross wave advection in the lower troposphere uh, produce the higher um, low level moisture. So you can see that uh, there's nothing wrong to say moisture is uh, higher to the east, but you have to explain why, and this theory uh, explain explain why um, in terms of uh, moisture direction. Let's go quickly to the next one, the trail interaction theory. The trail interaction represents the interaction between um, boundary layer uh, moisture convergence, convection, and uh, Rossby Caribbean wave uh, circulation. So that's the three parts interaction. And um, this di uh, diagram pretty much illustrate what uh, this th the essence of this theory. Um, in the boundary layer, when you have um, uh, easterly wind, then Coriolis force will create a convergence, and that convergence will push moisture upward um, and generate a uh, new convection. And this is exactly why the um, uh, MGO move uh, eastward. And the, um, the planetary scale and the interseasonal time scale of the MGO all determined by the, how the caravan rossby wave responds and interact with diabetic heating and with basic moisture structure. The last one um, is the harmonic oscillator. I include this because this theory is the newest one and it is not including any of the MGO re review uh, papers I, I introduced you at the very beginning. And this is a very uh, simple theory. It just simply say, if you include the uh, viscosity uh, momentum damping in the um, uh, Mo Matsuno shallow water equation, then Kelvin wave will slow down and become a harmonic oscillator. And this harmonic oscillator will respond to stochastic background forcing and a resonant at the intraseasonal and scale and the planetary scale k equal to one, zonal wave, wave number equal to one. And not only the caravan wave uh, slowed down, is structure also changed. We all know the caravan wave structure in the low level is such that the pressure is in phase with the zonal wave. This is the, uh, the to the left, uh, to the right, this is the caravan wave structure. But when it slowed down, the structure gradually changed. The pressure is no longer in phase with the uh, low level zonal wing, is in quadrature with the low level zonal wing. So the uh, low level uh, pressure is at where the convection is. And this is the MGO structure. So um, this theory basically say, uh, MGO is simply a transformed um, caravan wave uh, in response to stochastic forcing at, at the present of um, momentum damping. And so far, this is the simplest theory of the MGO. Okay, my time is up and uh, let me just quick make assumption, uh, make a conclusion. And as we see, there are very rich and diverse thinking on the dynamics of the MGO through, through theories. And uh, so if you ask the question, which one is correct? And uh, I'm afraid I have to say, you may ask a wrong question. To me, the question is, does the MGO have to be driven by a single mechanism or can some of them, or even all of those MGO theory, all are correct. All are part of the big elephant that uh, we feel. And um, however, the current MGO theories does not cover everything. It does not cover MGO initiation. So uh, we, if we have a theory that can explain MGO uh, initiation, that would be a, a great advance in MGO studies. And uh, some of them may know that uh, um, the recent discover um, a, a recent a wonderful discovery is that MGO and, uh, is um, modulated by QBO, the uh, uh, quasi-biannual -biannual oscillation, but we don't have a theory to explain that. And uh, some of you probably all also heard about the uh, uh, Barry effect of the maritime continent. That is when MGO propagate over the Indo-Pacific maritime continent, some of the MGO can propagate through and some just stall there and die. They cannot probably through. So that's, that's why it's called Barry effect. We don't have MGO theory that can explain this. 
And uh, the last one is we have lots and lots of uh, observations showing a very specific small scale at the convective level or, or even smaller scale uh, related to the MGO. And none of the theories at, at this moment include this uh, small scale process. So those are the potential uh, topics that can uh, be um, advanced in terms of a theoretical understanding of the MGO dynamics. I'll stop here and answer questions. Thank you very much, Chirang. It was an excellent summary of yeah, uh, really difficult topics developed over many decades, right? So thanks again. Mm -hmm.